Whether you're just getting started as a sax player or coming back after a big break, this course is the perfect place to help you go from your first notes right through to your first songs and learn a bunch of skills along the way. G'day, it's Nigel from Sax School. Hey, great to have you here for our beginner saxophone quick start course. In this first part of the course, we are gonna be talking about how to set up your mouthpiece and your reed and get your saxophone all assembled so you can start to make your very first sounds. Now, I'm gonna show you on the alto saxophone today, but you could also use this lesson whether you're starting on tenor or soprano or baritone. And by the way, most of us start on alto or tenor as adult learners, but if you're unsure about which one, check out the video down below where I help you choose between alto and tenor saxophone. Now, we've all got different ways that we like to assemble our saxophone. Often I'll have my whole saxophone assembled while I'm getting my reed out and then I'll put my reed on my saxophone. But for today, what I'd like you to do is to grab your neck and your mouthpiece. So I'm playing an alto saxophone, so of course I've got an alto saxophone mouthpiece. You've probably got a mouthpiece that came with your saxophone, but if you're going out to buy a new mouthpiece, make sure you choose the right one that suits your particular saxophone. Okay, so I've got my neck and I've got my mouthpiece, and the very first step is to put these two things together, and it should be an easy twist. So if you're struggling to get your mouthpiece easily onto your neck, and it's not just a simple twist, try putting some cork grease on, that should make it easier, and you should always put cork grease on every couple of weeks anyway to make sure that your cork doesn't dry out. But if you're still struggling to get that mouthpiece on, then just pop back to your retailer or go see a repairer. They can adjust that cork. It's a dead easy process, and it's a very common problem if you've changed to a new mouthpiece. Now, it's really important to get your mouthpiece lined up properly on the neck. If you hold your neck so that you can see the rib on the underside of the neck, the flat side of the mouthpiece should be perfectly in line with that. And we should have about a centimeter of cork showing beyond the mouthpiece. Okay, let's move on to the next step. So the second piece of equipment we need is one of these. This is a ligature. Now ligatures come in lots of different styles and shapes. You can see this one's got two screws, whereas this other one here has got a single screw. This one's a fancy metal one, this one's made of string, and this one's got no screws at all, it's just a ring of brass. This is the Jody Jazz power ring ligature. Now every ligature does the same job, which is just to hold the reed on place. I'll show you the reed in a second. But for now, just try popping your ligature on your mouthpiece so you know which way around it goes. For me, I've got this two screw ligature, which is the most standard style, and the screws face the same side as the flat side of the mouthpiece. But you'll notice with this single screw ligature, the screw is actually at the top. Okay, let's move on to reeds. This is a saxophone reed. Now reeds come in different brands, they come in different sizes and even in different materials. So you can see this is a synthetic reed, this is a traditional cane reed. And I'd suggest that you start with a cane reed. But of course, you need to get the correct reed for the type of saxophone that you're playing. I'm on an alto saxophone, this is an alto saxophone reed. Now reeds come in different sizes and the sizes refer to the thickness of the reed. The higher the size, the harder it is to play. For a beginner adult player, I'd suggest starting with a size two reed, but you could also choose a one and a half. Most players though, eventually move up to a two and a half reed or maybe even a size three reed. It really depends on your mouthpiece and your physiology. So I've been playing for like 40 years and I still play in a size two and a half reed because for me, that suits me with the mouthpiece that I like to play. So just be aware that whatever size you start at, whether that's one and a half or two, as your mouth muscles get stronger, you'll probably move up a size or two. Okay, let's look at how we fit this onto our mouthpiece. So the way the reed works is it makes a seal on the mouthpiece and it vibrates as we blow across it. So it's really important to get that seal working really, really well. And for that reason, we must make sure that the reed is wet. Okay, this is the thing that most beginner saxophone players think it's a bit disgusting. We have to have a lick of our reed. Now, I'll generally have it in my mouth while I'm setting my saxophone up. What's that, about 15 seconds or something? But it is important to get it wet and also at the back of the reed, so everywhere on the bottom. That's the disgusting part out of the way, it's nice and wet. Let's talk about how we fit this onto our mouthpiece. Now the really important thing here is that the reed is fragile at the tip, but the heel is the strongest part, and it's got a flat side which goes to the flat side of the mouthpiece. So I'm right-handed, 
So I normally would hold my mouthpiece with my left hand and slide the ligature forward, making sure that the screws are nice and loose. Then I slide the reed in thick end first and line it up even on both sides and just a whisker down from the top and then tighten the screws, just finger tight. Now it's really important that you don't over tighten your ligature. The ligature just has to hold the reed in place so that it doesn't move and that way it can vibrate freely. When you're new to putting your reed on, you might find you need to fiddle with it a little bit to get it right, but it should look nice and neat. Every time you do that, by the way, it's gonna get much easier. Let's put the saxophone together and start making some sounds. So we just gently twist the neck into the top of our saxophone body. We need to make sure that the rib that I mentioned before is in line with this key here. And then we gently tighten the screw at the top of our saxophone. Just like with our ligature, it doesn't need to be super tight, just finger tight so that the neck doesn't move. Now we haven't spoken about this yet, but this is a neck strap. You should have one in your saxophone case, and this is really important. So find your neck strap and pop it over your neck. So the neck strap is super important because it supports all the weight of the saxophone when we're playing. That way we can avoid having any extra tension in our arms. So the hook at the end of your neck strap should go into the ring at the back of your saxophone. So let's talk quickly about posture. Whether you're sat down like I am or stood up when you're playing, which is actually a really good idea, it's important that the neck strap is adjusted so that the mouthpiece can easily go straight into your mouth. You don't want to have to move your head up and down to reach that mouthpiece. You want it to be really, really comfortable. So to position our hands, take your right thumb, stick it under the hook at the back of your saxophone, and take your left thumb and stick that on the button at the top back of your saxophone. Okay, no need to push down any buttons for now. Let's talk about your embouchure. So in the saxophone world, your embouchure is your mouth. It's your mouth muscles and your mouth shape. And that's super important because that's the thing that really helps us to get the sound that we love on saxophone. Now, just like if you were starting a new sport, you'd need to build up your skills and you'd need to build up your strength. Well, it's the same with saxophone. Our mouth muscles need to build up and get stronger and have more stamina the more that we play. So it's really important that we take our time to build those muscles gradually. But the first step is getting a great shape of your mouth so that we can support that reed. Now I mentioned about the reed vibrating, so we need to make a little cushion for that reed to sit on so that it can vibrate easily. And the way we do that is with our bottom lip. Now there's a million different things on YouTube that will tell you one way or the other about how to shape your mouth. It can get really confusing. Let me show you the way that I've taught our thousands of students inside SAC School. So let's start off by saying VU, V-O-O, VU. When you make that sound, a couple important things happen. First of all, we get that round shape, OO. And secondly, the VU bunches up your bottom lip. So try saying VU for me now, and then slide your mouthpiece into your mouth, VU. Can you feel that bunched up lip that the reed rests on? Now stick your top teeth on top of the mouthpiece. This is really important. And then make a seal around the mouthpiece like a drawstring bag. So you're making a round seal around the mouthpiece. So VU, top teeth on, drawstring. Okay, that's the perfect shape for saxophone. One last thing to tell you, and that's how much mouthpiece to put in your mouth. If you look across the mouthpiece, there's a point where the reed comes away from the mouthpiece, and that's where your lips should be. Okay, take a big breath, and let's make the longest sound that we can. Now, if you're playing tenor saxophone, it might sound like this. Well, we've made some really great progress there. Now, go and check out these videos to learn your first notes and your first song. So if you're an alto player, choose this lesson. And if you're a tenor player, choose this lesson. I'll catch you on the next video.